let's take a look at how to master the camera app on your iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 mini. And if it helps, use the chapter markers to skip around the video. The first thing to check out is these volume buttons here on the side. These are a great way to capture photos rather than having to use the on-screen shutter button. You can press either of these two buttons, button or button, to capture a photo. And thanks to Quick Take, you can hold down either of the buttons and start recording a video. That's the top one, and press again. There's the bottom one to start recording videos. Makes sense, especially if you have your phone in landscape orientation because that shutter button is over here on the right side, but it's just where a shutter button would be on like a dedicated camera. But that's not all. If we go back and we jump into the settings application under camera, there's a toggle to use the volume up button for burst. So if we turn this on and go back to the camera app, the bottom button will start recording video, but if I hold the top button, it'll start capturing burst photos instead. On the iPhone 13 and iPhone 13 mini, there are two camera lenses. So as you'll see, they correspond to these different scoping levels inside of the app itself. So this is your one times optical zoom, your standard wide angle lens. You can also jump to the 0.5 option, which is your ultra wide angle lens. So you can go in between either of those just by tapping them. But there's an easier way too. You can grab and hold and twist and you're rotating this wheel to control how much you're zooming in and out of your photos. So you can go all the way out to 0.5 times or one times, or go all the way in to five times. Now, five times is digital zoom because the iPhone 13 does not have a dedicated telephoto lens. You can only go to one and 0.5 as your optical zoom options, but if you do zoom in up to five times, that will be digital zoom. You can go ahead and tap on these at any time to jump between them, and when the wheel is up, you can just slide down with your finger to remove it and go back to your two little presets. When looking at the volume buttons, I had briefly mentioned Quick Take, but it also works here with the shutter button inside of the app. If I tap and hold on the shutter button, it'll start recording a video right away. If I tap and drag to the left immediately, I'll start capturing burst photos, or I can tap and hold and then slide to the right to lock it into video mode. Let's go ahead and try that out. So I tap and hold, and now recording video. I can go ahead and tap and pull to the left while holding, and now I'm capturing a burst photos. Or if I tap and hold while I'm recording video, I can slide to the right and lock it in to video recording mode. Inside of the app, there are many controls all around the user interface. You have your different modes here at the bottom, and there are a few select controls that will intelligently appear towards the top. But if you want to access the rest of your camera controls, you can tap this little carrot icon at the top of the screen. When I tap on that, a new row, a little shelf, will appear here just above the shutter button. This one here will turn the flash on and off. I can choose between on, off, or auto. I can go to the second one, which is night mode. It's a little bit dark here where the camera is facing, so it is giving me this night mode option. And you can adjust the shutter duration there by tapping. We have this button, which toggles live photos on or off. We can change the aspect ratio going between four by three, which is your standard ratio, 16 by nine, so it is a widescreen format, or square one-to-one -one ratio, which is perfect for social media. Of course, you can always crop your photos after the fact. You don't have to do it at the time that you're capturing them. Finally, this one here is your exposure compensation, and you can move this up all the way up to positive two or all the way down to negative two. Just another way you can manually control how your photos look. The last two options here, if we keep sliding to the right, we have the option to turn on the self timer, timer off, three seconds or 10 seconds, you can get that great photo of you and a group, or the last one, which is filters. You can apply these filters at the time that you're capturing the photos. If we look at the top, you'll see some familiar icons, including that flash icon there in the left. Then we have the dark mode icon. On the right hand side, we have the live photos icon and another one, which looks like a bunch of layers. This is the new photographic styles. You can swipe through and set your preferred photographic style. There are multiple options, including cool, warm, vibrant, rich contrast, and standard basic photos. You can change these also within settings, which gives you a better idea of how they look with multiple sample photos. And here you can control exactly how much effect is being applied. So if we look at warm, you can adjust the warmth as well as the tone 
of that. So you can set your exact style that you like, and every time you take a photo, that photographic style is going to be applied at the time of capture. I had briefly already talked about night mode, that little moon icon you see at the top. Now that's going to turn on and off automatically for you based on the photo that you're taking. If it's in a dark surrounding, night mode is going to be active, but you can also activate it yourself and adjust the duration. It'll automatically change this duration too based on whether your iPhone is standing still or if it's handheld. Handheld, you'll only get a max of maybe three or 10 seconds because there's gonna be a certain amount of handshake going on. But if you stick your iPhone onto a tripod or a MagSafe mount, you can get that all the way up to 30 seconds and get some pretty incredible night mode shots. Finally, let's take a look at video mode. If I could just interrupt myself for a moment, it's sponsor time. I have to thank our sponsor for this video, Vogduo. Vogduo is out with its latest 100 watt GAN charger. Because Vogduo is relying on gallium nitride instead of silicon, it's able to create a higher output wattage charger at a smaller size. Take a look at it compared to Apple's own 96 watt USB-C power brick. It's much smaller and yet it outputs more power and has more outputs than Apple's does. This charger has four USB outputs. There are three USB-C PD ports for all of your latest Apple gear, like your iPhone, your MagSafe cable, your iPads. Heck, it'll even charge your Mac. But then there's also a USB-A port to charge any legacy devices that you may have around. The charger has a great look and feel, partially because of that genuine vegetable tanned leather that's wrapped around the outside with the contrasting white stitching to keep it in place. When you want to leave to go somewhere, you can simply pull that cable right off and then take it with you. That cable hides a set of integrated power prongs, so you can plug this directly into the wall when you need to, or connect that extension cable anytime you'd like. Go ahead and check out the Vong Duo 100 watt GAN charger now. There's a link down below in the description, and if you pick one up before Christmas, you can save an additional $10. Again, thanks to Vong Duo for sponsoring this video. Let's go ahead and uh, get back to our main content. You can see down here at the bottom how to switch modes. So photo, portrait, panorama, or if we go to the left, we can go to video, cinematic video, slow motion video, or time lapse. In this case, we're gonna be looking at regular video. Now, on the top of your screen, you can control the format. Right now, we're shooting in 4K at 60 frames per second. You can tap on it to change between HD 60 frames per second or 4K 60 frames per second. Head back over to the settings application, you can change the format of that video. So we can go here and go to 720p at 30 frames per second, 1080 at 30, 1080 at 60, 4K at 24, 4K at 30, or 4K at 60 frames per second. Shooting at a higher frame rate does take up more memory on your phone, but it allows you to slow it down to create smoother results. You can also toggle off HDR video. With HDR video off, you're not gonna be able to record in Dolby Vision. Dolby Vision HDR does take up, again, more memory, but it looks more stunning on both your phone and your TV if it's supported. In settings is where you can also change your frame rate for slow motion video, going between 1080p at 120 frames per second or 1080p at 240 frames per second. Cinematic video is basically like portrait mode, but for video. When you're shooting in cinematic mode, you do have the option to adjust the aperture here in the top left. You can see that F for the f-stop value, and you can go ahead and spin this dial to increase it all the way up to an f16, all the way down to an f2.0. The smaller the number, the more background bokeh you're going to see. Now, it doesn't make as much sense just showing you here with numbers, so let's go ahead and look at a practical example of portrait mode with cinematic mode. Here we have a short video of Ricky, and as you can see by this indicator, it was shot in cinematic mode. If I go ahead and tap on edit, we have additional controls for editing a cinematic mode video. On the top left hand side, we can see our object tracking. Right now it's tracking Ricky's face. So throughout the video, that's what's going to keep in focus. And you can see when it switches to the background there, I tap on his tail and it moves back there to his hindquarters. That's the object tracking and you can add multiple points of tracking. So instead of following Ricky's face, I could move it back here and keep that in focus instead. So with cinematic mode, you can change where the focus point is in the video. Starts off with his head and then moves back there to his tail. You can see the little indicator bars at the bottom when the focus mode is changed. We can also change that aperture. You can see the f2.8 value here at the top. When I tap on that, we get a slider on the right hand side of the window. Now watch the background of this video. So if I decrease that value, making it smaller, there's a little bit more blur. 
but when I go ahead and increase that value, it's making that background much sharper. You can see the difference between a higher aperture there and a lower aperture there. Similarly, you can also see what cinematic mode looks like turned on as well as turned off. So you can shoot a video in cinematic mode and turn off cinematic mode afterward if it doesn't look natural enough for you. Whether editing a cinematic mode video or any other videos you have, you have a few options on the right hand side, including automatically adjusting the look of the video and applying multiple adjustments. You can add your own filters to the video and provide the exact look that you're looking for or crop it in. So that covers it. That is everything that you need to know to master the camera app on your iPhone 13 or iPhone 13 mini.